Tonight I'll make some general comments in preparation for the workers' retreat that we have come for. You will see that because we are using this place, we have to begin a little bit late. And instead of rushing through the first message we should have given, I will reserve that message for a more appropriate time. But still, what we have to go through tonight is very, very important for every one of us. I want you to turn to the program sheet. We look at words that minister to gospel ministers. Actually, these are words from Christian writings of more than 100 years ago. And when you see what they wrote those days, you'll see the level of commitment they had to the Lord and to the Word of God. And I found it necessary to lead these words from the writings of about a century ago to bring everything to your notice so we can all benefit in a maximal way in this workers' retreat. I'll go through briefly one by one. Expect you to read over later on your own and meditate very deeply on them. A bushel of resolutions is of small value. A single grain of practice is worth the whole. It's the practice of a number of Christian people that they make decisions, they make resolutions, they make commitments, they even go ahead and make consecrations and vows. But many times they have forgotten the day they are made, or the week or the month they are made. We need to understand that it's the practice of the principles we have learned or we have been taught that is worth more than all the resolutions or decisions we may take. Number two, additions and subtractions are weeds which are hard to keep out of the garden of conversation. Christians have found that they fail very, very often from the words they speak rather than from any other area of their lives. Whenever Christians come together, puns, jokes, exaggerations, mark their conversations. And that's unfortunate. Because we have not so learned Christ. Everything Jesus said was necessary. Absolutely necessary. And profitable to everyone. Jesus was never employed in anything idle, unprofitable, cheap conversation. And from the accommodation arrangement, we need to set a watch over our lips so that we don't allow our minds, our tongues to run loose. It's sometimes common when Christians don't come together and they meet from different states, or they come to their quarters here, they tell tales. In other words, they are tale bearers. And they say things that are unnecessary, unprofitable, that will not minister to anyone. For example, a person might be talking about the state of us here. So the person in Lagos that were living way, now that is useless, apart from being useless, is very, very dangerous and destructive and unnecessary. Because the person you are talking to isn't going to go to your state overseer and correct your state overseer. He's not a leader or pastor over your state overseer. Or sometimes from a local church from the state, you'll be talking about your pastor to the person you are living with that will have accommodated you with here. That's unnecessary. It shows that you are not a committed Christian. Either you are a backslider or you are just on your way out of the kingdom of God. Because such conversation you will add 
he was surprised. And the person you are talking about doesn't have the opportunity to come and defend himself and say, Sister, you exaggerated a little bit. Brother, you didn't tell the whole truth. And those of you in Lagos, I will not imagine that we will talk about your zonal leader to the person coming from the stage staying with you. That will be unprofitable. That will be destructive. I cannot imagine that you'll talk about the coordinator of your own district to the people that are staying with you. Or to say that you'll talk about the headquarters church in a negative way. People that were disciplined before, something that happened, something that did not happen. Digging up the skeleton that had been buried many, many years and many months ago. Even the wicked people of the world, when something has died or someone has died and been buried, they don't go back the following year to dig it up. And so if you are accommodating somebody until 1 a.m., 2 a.m., you have not slept, you are talking and talking and talking, the devil is chairman of that conversation. That means you are a servant of the devil. And I cannot imagine that Cora, Dathan, and Abiram will rise up in the 20th century and talk about the general superintendent to the people that are coming from the states. Now, you have benefited, and a lot of teachings have gone on in the headquarters church here. Now, these people that have just come, they have opportunity of listening to me as their pastor, as their father in the Lord. And they have been having great expectation. We're going to Lagos, we're going to Lagos. But then you tell them, well, the pastor, general superintendent, for three months now, it's difficult to see him. And you will not explain to them it's because of the large church. You will not explain to him that it's because he has to preach five services every Sunday and answer such the scripture questions five times, making ten times all together. And that he has to teach three times on Monday. And he cancels full time on Tuesday. And he comes on Wednesday. He does a lot of things. He has to go to the States and have miracle services. And he has to come on Thursday and minister to people and be drained out. You'll not even say, well, we don't even know when he sleeps. But all you say is that, well, uh, for three months now we have not seen the general superintendent. That's terrible. That will look like... Is Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, they are risen from the dead again. And they are causing trouble again. If there is anything that you do to the pastor, the general superintendent, is to pay the respect. And say, so we thank God for him. Never speak evil. Never speak anything negative. That person you are talking to is not coming to the general superintendent to say, I hear that the person I stayed with said for three months, they have been trying to see you. They didn't come to see you. Now, I don't think that anybody from the state will come and do that. If they try to do that, I tell them they are going too far. And so let's understand that our conversations where we are must be productive, constructive, charitable. And the Bible says, touch not the anointed of the Lord. And if you do, you have spiritual problem in your life because God will not allow you to touch his eyeball. The pastor is the eye of the Lord, is the hand of the Lord, and he will not allow you to take your gossiping cutlass and cut off the hand of the Lord. He will deal with you for it, so be very careful. So don't gossip about anyone, even about your wife, about your husband. The person is not going to cancel you. just going to pity you. So additions and subtractions are weeds which are hard to keep out of the garden of conversation. Number three, a gospel that does not suit everybody does not suit anybody. You'll discover as you come over here this period that we preach the same gospel to everyone, to our students, to our men, to our women, to the highly placed, to the rich, to the poor, to the university fellow, and to the illiterate. Because 
if the gospel is not suitable for everyone, then it's not suitable for anyone. We teach the same thing, the same word. Balance your duties. Let not one press out another. There are a lot of things that you will be called upon to do. Make sure that you do everything on time. Not exalting one above the other. Baptize your heart in devotion. Air your wage into the stream of daily care. Because of going up and down during this workers' retreat, it may be difficult for some people to have quiet time. But make sure you do it. And um, you think, this type of meeting, that we're having at this time, how is it that it didn't accommodate us at the IBTC? Well, IBTC will not take everybody. And those of us who are here tonight, looking around, were still less than 10,000, perhaps. But I want to tell you that all over the world, there have been meetings that have been held, like we're holding this meeting now. I remember a meeting that was held some time ago that I read about. There's a whole book published on it. About 85,000 people came together for training. Like a workers' meeting like this. To train them on how to do the work of God. 85,000 Christians from all over that particular um, nation. And we have here less than maybe 10,000 at present. Another time, they gathered together more than 340,000 people, residents. Other people came from that town to join them. And in the very first night, in one meeting, they numbered 1,300,000. But the people that they had to give accommodation to, they were more than about 340,000. Now, if they did that in other places, why should it look strange that we're accommodating just about 10,000 to 12,000? If this church auditorium had been uh, wider, larger than this, would have had a workers' retreat all together. Even if you were 20,000, we'd say, come all together. Fellowship together would be wonderful. And we're praying and looking for the opportunity in Lagos here that we'll still get another parcel of land and build and probably accommodate 50,000, 60,000 all at a time. And when such times, when such time comes, all the people from all the states will just bring all of you together. And then you will live all over Lagos. Those who have not uh, gone to Ikoye before will put you in Ikoye to go and taste their soup there. Those who have not uh, lived at Ajigunle before will put you in Ajigunle to go and walk the dusty road. Those who have not been in the Agege area will make you to taste some of the experiences of mosquito in Agege area. We'll just transport you all about. I think that will be a wonderful time. But at present here, we are together. And the experience we have now will help us and show us how we'll have those other arrangements in the future. Number six, constancy is a proof of sincerity. All the things will be taught here, continue in them. Continued delay of duty is a continuous sin. The spear of spirit flees when you lean hard on a cross bearer. If you think on injuries, offenses, misunderstandings, disagreements, what people have said against you, what people have done against you, they stepped on your throats, they pushed you, it will bring despair in your heart. But when you lean on Christ, the cross bearer, you transfer everything to him. Everything will flee. Empty buckets are fittest for the well of grace. When you want to draw water out of the well, you lower your bucket empty into the well, but you draw it out full. 
And I'm believing that even if at present you feel empty, know that you are a candidate for the well of grace. Bring your empty heart, lower it down into the well of grace. Before you go back to your state, and those who are from Lagos, before you go back to your district, I believe you will be full to overflowing. Faith knows that whenever she gets a black envelope from the heavenly post office, there is a treasure in it. Now it is possible that in the seminars you will be addressed by people you have never known. Brothers you have never listened to. Sisters you have never listened to. There are people that are prejudiced against strange new voices. Somebody stands before you and the voice is new. The voice is strange. Immediately you say, what will he say? Well, you cannot tell how much of the Holy Ghost he has just by the tone of voice. We have been given our voices from birth. And a person will only use the voice that he has. And therefore, if you despise and say, why is he talking like that? You are despising God who made that man or that woman like that. And you'll find that we have areas where our sisters will minister. And I've been shocked, terribly shocked, by the ignorance of some people. And I just wonder how they can be that ignorant. That they cannot understand, they cannot bear how the Almighty God will ever use a woman's voice to lead anybody into the death of the grace and the abundance of the blessings of God. And the moment they hear a lady talking, oh, they say, why should somebody come out of the kitchen and stand before the pulpit? Are they not just supposed to remain in the kitchen? And it shows ignorance of church history. It shows ignorance of the great things that God has done through men and women. And if you are a member of Deeper Life, and then you hear a woman preaching, oh, that looks strange to you. Then it means that you are totally ignorant of the origin and the beginning of Deeper Christian Life ministry. From the very earliest times, we have never believed that God cannot give His Word, His power, His Spirit, His grace to women. And in all the retreats we have been having, dating back from 1975, women led Bible studies. To 1976, Baptist Academy, women led in Bible study. To 1977, at 1976, December at Enugu, women had women fellowship. And they got all those women together and they taught them the word of God. And those women asked questions and the women teachers and leaders, they answered the questions. To 1977, Onicha, women taught the word of God. To 1978, Ilori, women taught the word of God. Not only women here, but there's a woman that came from Kenya that we even allowed to minister. To 1979, at and at Kaduna, women taught the word of God. Come back to 1980, when we had that uh, retreat the first time at IBTC. Our women have always been involved, 81, 82. But you have some of these people that just came and they never learned what we have been doing before. How God had been blessing us tremendously. And we could tell you the history of women getting involved in the work of the Lord. And we continue, it's nothing strange. And so, whether it's a woman that is ministering in your seminar, 
You sisters, don't say, well, why did they put that person there? In all probability, those women, some of those women that you'll be listening to, they had been preaching before any of the main preachers you know today. Far back, 77, some of our sisters had been preaching before some of our state representatives now even started preaching at all. But some of you newcomers have forgotten all about that. But as the general superintendent, I have the whole history. Church history, Bible history, deeper life history. So then, do not despise the instrument that God may use. You get a black envelope, look at the treasure inside. You get somebody giving you a message, just don't look at the personality of the person, the height of the person. Just look at the word of God that that person is bringing out. Or you say, that person doesn't talk like my state overseer. Wonderful. Paul did not talk like John. James did not talk like Peter. But God used every, everybody. Now you people in Lagos, you'll be listening to state overseers. You'll be listening to other people. And some of them, they'll be talking from the pulpit here. Some of them are the seminar. It will be unfortunate. If you'll say, that's not like the general superintendent. Yes, his voice will be different. His stature might be different. The structure of his message might be a little bit different. But God has a message for you through everybody that speaks here. Can I hear an amen? And so you don't say, it's not preaching like the general superintendent. It's not standing like the general superintendent. Why is he jumping about? Because he's stronger than the general superintendent. You know, the general superintendent stays in one place and, you know, talks quietly, very, very weak, and, you know, talks slowly. But these other people, oh, God bless them. They jump, they run, they shout, they wave their hands. You need to listen to evangelists like that once in a while. And so you people in Lagos, pay attention. In your seminar, you have a state representative and it's jumping. When, we, when they finish, ask your neighbors and ask the other people, where is that from? Oh, they say that person is from Kano. You say, are they hot like that in Kano? You better believe it. They are hot like that in the north. If you are a preacher in the north, you have to be very, very hot. If you are a preacher in the south, where well, you can gather crowd by just being simple and standing somewhere, just in one place. You can't stand like that in one place in the north and gather crowd like this. You have to be hot and fiery. Do we understand? The point I'm making is this. Love everybody. Accept everybody. The point we need to understand that these are children and men of God. And because they are men of God and God has put their word, and women of God as well, God has put their word in their hearts, we need to accept the word of God that is being preached. Faith laughs at that which fear weeps over. God can use inferior people for grand purposes. When I say inferior, we're using human language. God doesn't see any of his children inferior to any other child of God. Am I right? But in our own language, we generally talk about inferior people, less educated people, illiterate people, short people, tall people, lean people. But that's human language. But even when we use the human language, God can use inferior people for grand purposes. How can a soul make progress if he is ever more changing its course? Do not sow in Beersheba and then rush up to reap in Dan. Stay where you are. That's what it means. Be stable. You know what has helped the Deeper Life Bible Church? We remain at our posts. And um, I've been in Lagos here for more than 15 years now. And you can count all the Mondays I've missed on your fingertips. You can count all the first days I've missed on your fingertips. And I enjoy being here. But you have to really pray and drag me out of Lagos before I leave. Why do I do that? If I sow in Beersheba, I want to reap in Beersheba. I do not want to sow here and then run off to another place 
to go and reap over there. And so if you have been a worker in a particular place, stay there. You started the foundation of the work there, stay there. Rather than you are here today, and as you are over here, you begin to discuss with one another, and you say, from which state are you? Well, I'm from such and such a state. Oh, in our state, things are like this, things are like that, and it paints a very beautiful picture for you. And you have been sowing the seed in your own state. Then you say, maybe I should come over to your own state. Or some of you are here in Lagos, and you think that uh, Lagos, there must be work. The austerity in Nigeria is only in our state, but not in Lagos. So, as they have accommodated me with you now, if I came back next week, will you accommodate me? Can I come back? I think there should be work in Lagos. And then all that you have been sown in Beersheba, you leave your house fellowship as a zonal leader, as an area leader, as a house fellowship leader. All the work you are doing as a state evangelist, now you want to stay in Lagos. And you better believe that there is austerity in Lagos too. Oh, you say you don't see it on their faces. Yes, it's not on our faces. The grace of God covers all that. We smile, we laugh in Lagos. Even when things are difficult, we say it will be better tomorrow. That by the end of this month, Lagos people, you'll never be the same again. And we normally say in Lagos here that at the end of this month, you'll say, I've never seen it like this before. No job now, but job will come. We're living by faith. You go back to your state and live by faith. Don't all come to Lagos here. If you all come to Lagos here, the work over there will be paralyzed. And Lagos the people, the people who are accommodated with you, their accommodation finishes Saturday morning. After Saturday morning, you act like a vigilant landlord eject them. So if they say, I want to wait uh, for Sunday, say, get a letter from your state overseer. Don't let us paralyze other branches of deeper life and make the people to stay here in Lagos. I believe they will go back home. I believe they love their state. Those of you coming from the state, do you love your state? If you love your state, can you raise up your hand and wave it at me? You really love your state? All right, God bless you. Where are those people from Lagos? Can you raise up your hand, Lagos people? Now, don't follow them to their states. I need you here in Lagos. So, the point is this. When we sow in Beersheba, we don't run off away from Beersheba and go and reap in another place. Number 14. It needs more grace to lead than to follow. Needs more grace to lead. I would rather obey God than rule an empire. We'll stop there today. I'll continue tomorrow. I believe that God has given us a lot as we have heard today. Look at John chapter 13. Verse 17. If ye know these things, appear ye if ye do them. If you know these things that we have just learnt of, now you'll be a happy, blessed person if you do them. And today we'll consecrate ourselves to the Lord and tell the Lord that as these things have been brought to our notice, we'll keep to the word of God. We'll not despise the instruments that God will use either here during this workers' meeting or in our states, or in Lagos here, anytime. And we preachers too, you know sometimes um, it's very nice to speak to preachers as well. We should be very, very careful that in honor we prefer one another. It does a great lot of harm to the church, to the people of God, if somebody has spoken before you and then you came in there to give your own message and to emphasize 
your own message and show that you want to be very, very effective and you want the people to pay attention. You talk as if now whatever you have heard from other people, this is the message. All that you have heard from other seminarians and other teachers and other speakers, if you miss this, it's like you didn't attend the workers' retreat. You know what that means? You are saying, all those people, they didn't know anything. That's the implication. That I come as a man, as a woman, sent from heaven. And all those other people that spoke, they are the earth. All their messages are not important or relevant. This is what you must not forget. And then you say, if you allow Satan to cheat you, because if you have been weak in your life, if you listen to all the other messages that are being given here, if you miss this, you'll never be effective in your life. No. That's wrong. That's destroying what other people have done. The program is prepared in such a way that every message contributes to the life and the ministry of each worker. And we shouldn't talk as if all the other workers know nothing. All that we are saying is what is right. And then, brothers in particular, I need to say this publicly. I've been shocked of the attitude that some brothers have towards our sisters that we give opportunity to minister. And towards the congregation will talk and act as if, well, those sisters, they are just encouraging them to preach. But now, we men, we have come. You need to listen. That's a wrong attitude. The Bible says, in honor, preferring one another. And I have been trying, by the grace that God has given me, that I'll inculcate humility into everybody that has any relationship or association with Deeper Life Bible Church. Everybody. Men, women, educated, illiterate. The thing that will make me happiest in the church is that we love one another. You as a man don't look down the women, count them as slaves, and you women don't look down the men, and count them as people that are just there to oppress people, that in honor you prefer one another. And uh, I believe that all of us having the grace of God in our hearts and the Spirit of God in our lives, I believe that we shall please the Lord in all these areas in Jesus' name. And those of you from the States, when you go back to your States, you need to really control your tongue. Have you noticed that you sisters, the way you cannot talk about the men who are zonal leaders, the men who are um, area leaders, the men who are pastors, and the men who are state overseers, you talk against the sisters so terribly. To look like you don't even love one another. You do not appreciate one another. Recently, somebody in Lagos, there, his sister, told me and said, cancel all these uh, sisters, um, start the scripture in, um, in deeper life headquarters here. Bring all of us together again. A lady said that I would prefer all the sisters and brothers, they join together again. Because of this and this, I said, I don't appreciate that. That you are a woman and you are talking like that. You don't want to be taught by other women like yourself. You know more than those other women. You'll prefer a man who will be there to teach everybody. How will the women ever develop? How will they ever be able to do anything substantial in the work of the Lord? And I said, when the pastor does something, yours is to go on your knees and say, Lord, thy will be done. He puts the women there. To teach you women folk, Lord, thy will be done. If he puts the men there to teach the men folks, Lord, thy will be done. Whatever is done, we are not committing sin. We want everybody to have a sense of belonging. He says from peacefulness. 
Do you agree with that? I said, do you agree with that? So, if ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Let's love one another. Respect one another. And sometimes when you listen to me, as a general superintendent, I might correct people publicly. If somebody preaches wrong, as the pastor, as the father of everybody, I can say, this is wrong, this is wrong. But if you are called to preach here, as a state overseer, or as a zonal leader, you cannot stand up here and condemn and criticize your colleagues. You are, you are a zonal leader. You cannot say, what that other zonal leader preached now, I need to forcefully correct that. That is wrong. How can you say that? You are colleagues. Or you are state representatives together. You are a state overseer. It's a state overseer. And he preached something. Leave that to me. Just preach your message and in honor, prefer one another. Let's love one another and leave all that public correction to the general superintendent. Let's rise up and pray. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Open your heart and open your mouth to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. I yield myself, I surrender myself, I give myself, I open up myself.